Hello, everybody, and welcome back to what has become a daily occurrence here on the channel in the buildup to NHL 24 season less than a week away at this stage. It is more ratings talk and discussion as the NHL continues to reveal said ratings leading up to the game's release. We have a lot to talk about today, but I will mention, of course, if you missed the conversations from the last couple of days in regards to their top wingers and their top defenders, make sure to check out those videos if you haven't already done so. But let's get down to business here because not only do we have have the top goalies to talk about. I'm going to start off with their top 24 under 24 rankings. And first things first, the top three is bang on the money. The top four, really, right on the money. You can argue ratings for my money. Jack Hughes is that step above anybody else as the best player under 24 in the NHL. Uh, then you get Darlene, Quinn Hughes, and Timmy Stutzla. And for me, Darlene and Quinn are right there. And then Timmy Stutzla, you know, the first couple seasons, he was getting there. Last season was his big breakout season. The other guys, I think, have just a little bit more in terms of the, the history to show for. But there's no doubt that top four, 100% correct. Then you get to Andrei Svechnikov. Now, I know a lot of people are like, ah, your winger rankings for Svechnikov. Uh, I think he is five or six. That person in contention with him, for my money, is Trevor Zegras. Uh, and obviously, he is two overall points better than Zegras in NHL 24. So that's the only thing that kind of rubs me the wrong way. I do think uh, Svechnikov has that rightful claim to number five or Trevor Zegras, either way. It's, it's a conversation. More at Cider at number six, again, I do think is a little bit overrated, at least at the moment. I do think he is going to get there, um, as well as likely get a haircut in the future. That's fucking wild. Um, for me, he is right in that conversation as could be in the top 10. Alongside other guys who are on this list, Matty Beneers, there's an argument for him to be in that 10 spot. Kirby Doc, there's an argument for him to be in that 10 spot. He's currently at 23. Uh, there's also an argument for Keandre Miller, who currently sits 10th, so no complaints about that. And then one really notable absence from this list, Flyers fans, where the hell is Joel Farabee? I had to double check. I'm like, he's still under 24. He is. He's 23 years old right now. I do not understand where Joel Farabee is. Maybe he's at an 83 overall and they gave the tie to Seth Jarvis. Uh, I don't understand how Joel Farabee isn't uh, in the top 24, at least as they've listed it. Uh, that's a pretty rough one. Obviously, we have Zegris at seven. Already talked about him and where he could have been as high as number five. You got Noah Dobson at number eight. I think Dobson is in the top 24. Again, I think it's an overrating to have him in the top 10 right now. I think there are other guys, uh, mainly that cluster of players that I mentioned, that should be top 10 over Noah Dobson. I do think he's top 24, though. Cole Caulfield, top 10, no doubt. Uh, even number nine could be justified at this stage, so no issue with that. Keandre Miller, like I mentioned, top 10 arguable. Bowen Byram. Uh, Bowen Byram's overrated at this point. Uh, he had, I mean, and I'm sorry, Bowen Byram's very, very good. And obviously in the Colorado Avalanche Stanley Cup run, he was very, very good. Uh, this is, it's a little bit high at this stage. I got to be honest. I don't know if he, if he makes the top 24, he's just sneaking in. Uh, for me, I think that an 86 is pretty fucking high at this point. Uh, Dylan Cousins should be in the top 10. I don't understand how he isn't. At worst, I think you're 7, 8, 9 in that range. Uh, so he's as many as five spots too low for my money. If we go to the back half of the list, or we click too far, we go to the back half of the list. You have Matt Boldy, somebody else right in there with that Dylan Cousins, Cole Caulfield conversation. Uh, him being outside the top 10 is crazy to me. Jake Sanderson. Got that brand new big contract from the Sens. A little bit overrated at this point. I think you can make the argument for top 24. Uh, him being higher than Matty Beneers is insane to me. Sanderson was phenomenal last season, gets that big contract. I do think he is going to be that legitimate number one defenseman for the Ottawa Senators. Uh, he's not there yet. Um, again, bit of an overrating for me with Jake Sanderson, and he's someone who I gave franchise potential to last year in NHL 24. So clearly I believe in the guy, but the 85 is a bit much. Tying him uh, with Matty Beneers, which uh, yeah, again, Beneers, you can make an argument for just outside the top 10, that number 10 spot, but him being 15th doesn't sit right. Uh, Dawson Mercer at 16, 
another guy who's overrated at this stage. You can make the argument for top 24, but him being at 16 when someone uh, like Joel Farabee is not on this list, when someone, and people might be like, LOL, what? But when someone like Barrett Hayton um, is not on this list, someone who's developed into one of the best defensive forwards in the NHL, of course, you wouldn't fucking know about it because he plays for the Coyotes, but when he's developed the way that he's had, Anton Lundell, not being on this list from the Florida Panthers while Dawson Mercer and Jake Sanderson are does not sit right with me. And I got to be honest, I know, I get it. Former second overall pick hasn't quite hit the heights of a second overall pick. Where's Capo Caco? Someone else who's really developed defensively. He's more of a Barrett Hayton than a Jack Hughes. I don't understand how Capo Caco is not on this list either. So there's a couple of notable exceptions that uh, kind of puzzle me. Owen Power, no doubt, top 24 defenseman. Evan Bouchard, no doubt. Uh, Spencer Knight, ranked a little bit highly for me right now at an 85. That's that's kind of wild that he's that high up there. Uh, Kent Johnson as well, I wouldn't have in my top 24 right now. I do think he'll be great for Columbus. That 84 is crazy. Uh, Machis Maselli, also overrated at this point. An 84 off of one season is nuts. Lucas Raymond, no doubt, top 24, same as Kirby Doc, and Seth Jarvis, I think, is right on the cusp. I'm not going to put up too much of a fuss about him being at 24, but uh, I talked about it with those defensive and winger ratings. For the most part, they're all right. For the most part, this is all right, too, but this might be the first list that they've put out where I'm like, okay, um, yeah, I can't agree with it in a lot of ways, uh, more so than the other lists that we've had out there so far so yeah uh that one's a little bit rough for me uh there's the top 10 deking ratings as well i don't care um like it, it's such a difficult thing to quantify just how good someone's hands are at this stage so that is what it is to me again for my rosters as people will know if you use them last year to make up for the horrible defensive awarenesses and stuff like that uh, i typically make 99 deking for everybody um, and then, you know, through sliders and just in a general sense, like, you know, Connor McDavid will still technically be better at deking in the game uh, than Eric Goodbranson. Uh, you're still going to see McDavid try crazier moves uh, soon than that, or, you know, more uh, more often, not more soon. What am I even saying? But yeah, top 10 deking, it's a very difficult thing uh, to quantify. So that brings us uh, to the top goalies list which is topped by one Andre Vasilevsky, who, for my money, is the fourth, maybe fifth best goalie in the NHL right now. If you are in a playoff situation, Game 7, Stanley Cup Final, what goalie are you going to pick? Andre Vasilevsky to be your guy. Um, so I understand why he's here, but I do think it's just a little bit of a legacy rating in that I feel like some other guys, especially with their regular season consistency, even their playoff consistency in regards to someone else coming up here, um, if not a couple of other options, I, I do think there's an argument to not have Vassie as number one. I am not surprised that he is number one. Ilya Sorokin listed second in a tie for second with Igor Shosturkin. Uh, for my money, Ilya Sorokin's the best goaltender in the NHL right now, so I would have him above Andre Vasilevsky, especially when we talked about that defensive list and the overratings for Dobson, Pelik, Pollock. The reason why I think they're overrated by EA is because Ilya Sorokin is making them look better than they actually are. He's the star of that defense, not the defensive system, not the players. It's Ilya Sorokin. You get a lesser goalie in there for the New York Islanders, and then all of a sudden, oh God, they're not viewed as this defensive juggernaut. It's Ilya Sorokin. He is that damn good. Igor Shosturkin, for me, is the second best goaltender in the NHL right now. I'd have him just below Sorokin. But there's no doubt these two are insane. They're absolutely insane. And it's crazy to me uh, how back in the day there was that big debate of Samsonov, Sorokin, Shesterkin, who's going to come over from the KHL and dominate. And it's been these two uh, that have lived up to the hype, especially not that it, Ilya Samsonov is bad, uh, but he is, of course, a few steps below these two here. 
Connor Hellebuck listed at number four on EA's list. Uh, for me, he is right there in that argument four or five with Andre Vasilevsky. So him being top four, I'm good with. Linus Allmark, the reigning Vesna winner. Uh, I would have him around probably the six, the six spot. So again, for me, he's ranked a little bit highly at this stage, but it's not surprising uh, given that he won the Vesna and the Jennings, for that matter, uh, with Jeremy Swayman. You have Jake Ottinger at number six. And for me, again, uh, I'd have him right around that six, seven spot at this stage. So I can't disagree with that too much. The big one to disagree with is UC Soros. Now, again, all of these overalls are really, really close. Uh, UC Soros is a top three goaltender. My top three is Sorokin, Shesterk, and Soros. Um, you know, even if, I mean, he is outright in seventh, uh, that is massively disrespectful, <laughs> in my opinion. To not have him top five is already pushing it. Um, or to not have him top three is already pushing it. To not have him top five is absurd to me. So that's that's a big one where it's like, all right, yeah, you, you got that one wrong. And then Freddie Anderson. Um, goodness, let me see here. Uh <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, uh, I, I would have Anderson 14th, 15th at best for him being top eight uh, is absolutely crazy to me. I know the Carolina Hurricanes have been a very good, consistent team until they get to the playoffs, um, at least outside of the first round um, and really up to the conference finals. Let's be honest. Him being top eight is is bonkers to me, as is Thatcher Demko. I think he's in that same conversation of he is a back half goaltender at this stage. Um, you can make the argument he is the new John Gibson in that his team is just riding him into the dirt. And then it gets to the question of, oh, is his are his numbers dropping because his team's bad or are his numbers dropping because he's getting worse or both? Any of the three can be true. Uh, but Thatcher Demko being a top 10 goaltender right now for me, that that's a big no. Uh, as it is for Carter Hart, you can make an argument for top 20, but Carter Hart, Thatcher Demko, Freddie Anderson uh, being in the top 10 for me is uh, oof. Uh, oof, at this stage. The back half, Tristan Jari, I think he again is in that same conversation of you look at someone maybe 14th or beyond. Uh, him being top 11 doesn't really sit well for me. Sergei Bobrovsky being in the top 12 does not sit well with me at all. I know that he had a great playoff showing, so I'm not surprised to see him there. Great playoff showing outside of the first round. Well, really halfway through the first round. Shout out to Alex Lyon pooping the bed and allowing the Florida Panthers to make it all the way to a Stanley Cup final. Jeremy Swayman, 13th. Uh, I will get called biased for this, uh, especially because he's a 1B in a lot of people's eyes. Uh, there is an argument for Jeremy Swayman to be top 10 already. Um, I'm not surprised to see him at 13th, but there's an argument for him to be top 10. Uh, Philip Gustafson should very much be top 10 at this stage. Alexander Georgiev should very much be top 10 at this stage. Uh, these two not being in the top 10 to me is uh, no pun intended for one Philip Gustafson. Absolutely wild. Jake Markstrom. Again, uh, back half of the list type of player. So him being at 16, I'm good with. I'm glad he's not top 10 anymore. Ilya Samsonov, I'm good with. That conversation can be there. Uh, Darcy Kemper not being a top 10 goalie is insane to me. And again, you notice, though, look at how many fucking 86s there are. All but one goalie in the top 20, 11 to 20, are an 86. It's a mess in that regard. An absolute fucking mess. Uh, Darcy Kemper not being top 10 is insane. Of course, John Gibson's still there. Uh, I guess you can make the argument for top 20. Uh, and then same for Billy Huso. Uh, for me, this goaltending list is is the worst one yet. And it's it's not even close. Like I said, Kemper not being top 10 is insane to me. Uh, Mark andre Fleury, uh, Semyon Varlamov. I know they're veterans at this stage, but them not being in the top 20 uh, while somebody like John Gibson is is crazy to me, uh, this is easily, for my money, the worst list yet, unfortunately. Um, the top 24 would have taken that prize, and now the goaltending, to me, is, is brutal. There's a lot of legacy ratings. Uh, this is easily the worst one so far.
There's no other way to put it. I'm intrigued to know what you guys think, of course, in the lovely comment section below, but uh, I'm going to have my work cut out for me on the roster editing front when it comes to these goalie ratings because it's, it's bad.